What's going on guys? Sam Adams here and welcome back to another episode of On The Top of Gov, where next week we will have a brand new graphics pack. As for right now, going with Old Faithful, but today we're going to be talking about Black Ops 4. Yesterday, there was a huge reveal event that gave details on multiplayer, gave details on zombies, revealed the new Battle Royale mode, and we're going to be hitting all of the highlights and I'll give my two cents on some stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So to start things off, let's talk about the meat of the game, the multiplayer. That's what most people go to Call of Duty for these days. If not that, then you're going to zombies, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Black Ops 4 multiplayer raises the bar, delivering the most thrilling grounded combat experience yet, with a focus on tactical gameplay and player choice. The game offers a new level of online action across a variety of new weaponry, maps, and modes. For the first time, multiplayer serves as the center of the game's narrative as players uncover a deeper connection to the role of each specialist and their unique play styles. With the return of the pick 10 create a class system and when combined with the new gear category, gameplay becomes more customizable than ever, giving players choice over how to power up their specialist. Combined with the ability to unlock devastating score streaks along the way, players will have the opportunity to be dangerous alone or unstoppable as a team. So to break down what this is saying, essentially you are going to be getting a new kind of Call of Duty gameplay, and I know that they say that year after year, I know we've heard that before, but this time around, there is actually a big difference in what is being presented here as compared to what we've seen in years past. The main thing is that specialists are a little bit different this time around. Specialists are kind of similar to the way that you would look at a Rainbow Six Siege operator, where each one has a specific ability that is going to allow them to work with a team better in combat. So there might be somebody that can put up a giant shield and then there might be somebody that has a really good gun uh, that can shoot around the shield and kind of, you know, uh, team up with that specialist to effectively take out an entire team of other people just by combining the resources and abilities of each individual specialist. So to break down what's going on in the multiplayer, essentially you're getting a combination of a lot of different games, but the main thing here is that the core Call of Duty experience is still going to remain intact, and I think that is a big deal. I think that's something that is very, very significant because players are coming to Call of Duty uh, expecting to get the same kind of thing, although they do want some innovation. So it's important to stay grounded in what the game has become to date and still bring in new innovative ideas that change up the way the game flows. And the main innovative idea that I see within the core multiplayer experience is actually the implementation of a true specialist system uh, that is kind of similar to what you would get in Rainbow Six Siege with the operators. If you check out one of the trailers, you'll see that a variety of different specialists have a variety of different abilities, meaning there might be one dude that can pop up a giant riot shield that multiple people can stand behind and then somebody might come around and they might be a different specialist who has a really awesome hand cannon style weapon that is a one shot kill. Uh, you peek around the barrier that has been set up by one specialist with the other specialist and boom you've got true genuine teamwork within a Call of Duty game that isn't just calling out shots and calling out routes. Of course one thing that I like is that the pick 10 create class system is back. I thought that was the best way to do customization within Call of Duty but in addition to that you also have boots on the ground gameplay. There isn't going to be any kind of jetpack while running, to my knowledge, uh, that I have heard of yet, so it seems like it's going to be a much more grounded kind of Call of Duty experience, similar to what you would get in a Modern Warfare-esque game, but you are in that futuristic setting with Black Ops 4, picking up where Black Ops 3 essentially left off, uh, but I love the setting, I love that idea, I love a good bit of, of everything that's coming out about the Black Ops 4 multiplayer. This is the first Call of Duty that I'm really seeing something that is calling out to me and saying that there have been changes made, but it still has that grounded experience, like I said before, that keeps you in tune with what Call of Duty is at its very core. In addition to that, there is also the brand new Zombies mode. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 delivers the biggest day one Zombies offering ever, with three full experiences at launch. IX, I believe that might be nine perhaps, Voyage of Despair, and Blood of the Dead, with an exciting new adventure and a brand new cast of characters. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Zombies will feature the deep gameplay and easter eggs that its fans have come to expect. So with this, you are getting more of what people love with Zombies, and in fact, three experiences on day one is pretty dang impressive. Of course, as they said, you have Voyage of Despair, which is kind of a Titanic setting. Uh, you have IX or 9, perhaps, which is actually a Gladiator setting. Very strange. I loved the cinematic. Uh, doesn't feel like a Call of Duty game. It's kind of like if you took Rise, Son of Rome, and combined it with a Zombies experience you would get from a Call of Duty. Uh, very interesting. And on top of that, Blood of the Dead, which is a continuation or a remastering, actually, of Mob of the Dead, the classic Zombies experience from Black Ops 1. When it comes to the Zombies, there really isn't that much to 
say. It's Black Ops Zombies. People love this stuff. People have fallen in love with this stuff, and it's become a huge part of the game. Uh, so to see them fleshing it out more and more is something that isn't shocking to me. I'm just kind of, you know, along for the ride. It's never been my cup of tea. I was more of a fan of the Ascension map in Black Ops 1. I was a big fan of the original Kino. You know, I'm a, I'm a simple man. I don't need a whole bunch of Easter eggs or, you know, steps to achieve whatever you're supposed to achieve in Zombies. I just want to shoot the undead people, okay, man? I just want to shoot the undead people. And now, perhaps the biggest announcement of the day, which is actually Blackout. In Blackout, Black Ops comes to life in one massive battle royale experience combining Black Ops signature combat and the biggest map in COD history. Play as fan favorite characters and battle through iconic settings from the Black Ops universe. It's a collision course bringing together the worlds of Black Ops in an all out survival and elimination experience featuring weapons, equipment, land, sea, and air vehicles, RCXDs, traps, and even zombies in an experience that is uniquely Black Ops. I'm not sure what to expect from this because there's so much happening here. I was on board until zombies came into the mix. I'm not exactly sure how that is going to work. Maybe it'll be like an NPC kind of thing where it speeds up the gameplay by having zombies chasing everybody. Uh, I'm not sure what it will end up being, but the fact that it is combining all of the universes that we've seen so far in the Black Ops franchise uh, is very exciting to me because the way this was originally pitched on the stage, this is part of the conference that I actually caught, uh, is essentially like it's going to be a greatest hits conglomeration of everything Black Ops, and it's being brought together in one big battle royale experience. So with that being said, I'm actually genuinely pumped about this. I was a big fan of Black Ops 1. I was okay with Black Ops 2 and 3, uh, but to see them all coming together and to see this new innovative idea that's building on what has been built uh, by PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds and also Fortnite and other Battle Royale experiences, uh, you can't help but be pretty pumped about this. And Blackout is a very cool name, if I do say so myself. And finally, what about that PC experience? How, how is that shaping up for this year? How is that shaping up for 2018's Call of Duty? Surprisingly enough, fairly well, at least as well as Destiny 2 did, because PC versions of Black Ops 4 are coming to Blizzard's Battle.net. For the first time, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is coming to Battle.net in a fully optimized for PC experience and fully integrated into Battle.net's social features. Developed in partnership between Treyarch and Beanox, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 will be the most robust, refined, and customizable PC shooter experience we have ever created. Features include uncapped frame rate, 4K resolution, HDR, support for ultra-wide monitors, and additional features built for the PC gaming community. Over the past couple of years, the PC versions of Call of Duty have been fine, but no one's really been playing them. They've kind of dropped off the face of the map, uh, but we have had a lively community still thriving on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. Uh, so, with that being taken into account, you begin to see them shift towards bringing more of a focus towards the PC gaming community. The question is, how many people are going to be buying this? How many people are going to be getting behind this? Of course, being on Battle.net is kind of like a stamp of, of quality, of approval almost, uh, where you know that it's going to be a pretty good game, but at the same time, do I really need a Call of Duty on PC? It's a fine game on the PlayStation 4, and with consoles like the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro being increasingly popular, I feel like the majority of the player base is still going to be sticking on the console experience, but to see them putting more focus on the PC version of the game, to see them trying to rein back in those PC players and to get them to come back to Call of Duty after a couple of years of hiatus maybe is certainly a good effort on their part and something I'm pretty excited to see if it in fact does end up panning out. And one more piece of news, there is not going to be any kind of Call of Duty campaign this year. There's not going to be a single player story driven experience. Uh, we've heard this for a couple of weeks now. I covered it on an episode of Caffeinate the Morning Show that I host every single weekday morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Shameless plug. But uh, we've been talking about this for a while and it seems like it is in fact true. There is not going to be a single player experience within Black Ops 4. And it's kind of the end of an era for me. Because as far back as I can remember, since I've been playing Call of Duty, I've always at least mildly uh, some somewhat looked forward to the campaign because they always did a fairly decent job, uh, but I think somebody on Twitter really drove it home when they said that the Call of Duty campaigns have gotten to be so predictable. Uh, it's like playing an action movie, and did we need to put all of the resources towards a single player experience in another Call of Duty game? I don't necessarily think that we could, so to reallocate those funds, to reallocate those resources, and make stuff like Blackout, the Battle Royale experience, to make stuff like a genuinely good PC port, I feel like it's a pretty good trade-off, and I think that I'm going to 
be excited to see where the future of Call of Duty goes if the narrative is kind of integrated into the multiplayer and zombies experiences. I'm not really complaining that much. So that pretty much wraps it up for all of the news that came out of yesterday's Black Ops event. I'm sure that I missed a couple of things here and there, but you get the highlights. Are you a big fan of Black Ops and are looking forward to Black Ops 4? Did it not really scratch your itch? What do you think about the future of Call of Duty? Leave it in the comment section down below. And if you happen to be new to the channel, then I would encourage you to check out some of the other content. Maybe tune into an episode of Caffeinate in the morning. Uh, whatever you might be doing, I have a lot of content out there that is ready to be watched if you are into it. But I will talk to you guys soon. Have a fantastic weekend. And I personally am looking forward to Black Ops 4. Peace.